welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Today, we're going to talk about how setting up a standard curve helps us to translate PCR amplification data into precise quantitative results. In fact, how we set up the reaction is just one part of the challenge for real-time PCR. It's also important that we know how to make sense of the data that we generate. In quantitative PCR, the data output is typically in the form of cycle threshold values, or CT values. This value indicates the number of cycles required during the PCR to amplify sufficient DNA to pass a detection threshold. The CT value can be used as a measure of the amount of starting template DNA. The more template DNA present at the beginning of the reaction, the quicker the cycle threshold is reached. Put another way, the lower the CT value, the greater the amount of template DNA in the sample. But suppose we'd like to convert out CT values to some other units like copies per milliliter or nanograms of DNA. For this, we need a standard curve. To construct a standard curve, we first need a sample of our target DNA or RNA for which we already know the concentration. The standard can be either a vector or the viral genome extracted from a virus stock. We then make a dilution series of this standard sample. This dilution series should cover a broad range and reflect the concentrations we expect to find in our unknown samples. When preparing the dilution series for our known standard, it's crucial to mix each dilution thoroughly. Be sure to change pipette tips meticulously after each step to maintain accuracy and precision. Once the standard sample's dilution series is prepared, they are run in triplicate in a qPCR reaction alongside our unknown samples. The resulting CT values, along with the known DNA concentrations, can be used to plot a standard curve. We plot our standard curve by placing the average CT values on the y-axis against the logarithm of the starting quantities of our standards on the x-axis. This approach gives us a beautifully linear relationship, making the analysis straightforward and clear. This is a good moment to reflect on why we use a logarithmic scale when setting up our standard curve. Firstly, each cycle in a PCR theoretically doubles the DNA amount, leading to an exponential increase. By using the logarithmic scale, this exponential growth is transformed into a linear format, simplifying our analysis. Secondly, qPCR can detect DNA across various concentrations. Plotting logarithms compresses this wide range of data into a manageable scale, allowing us to easily compare vastly different DNA concentrations. Once we have our data points plotted, the next step is performing a linear regression analysis. This gives us the best fit line through the data, represented by the equation y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. The slope tells us how the CT value changes with different DNA amounts, and it is crucial for understanding PCR efficiency. The y-intercept anchors the trend line to the y-axis. Adding a trend line also gives us an r-squared value. The r-squared tells us how well the line fits the data points. A high r-squared, close to 1, indicates a good fit, and in qPCR standard curves, it's typical to have R-squared values of 0.98 or higher. We can now use our standard curve to interpolate the unknowns, where we convert the CT values of our unknown test samples into absolute values. Suppose we have this standard curve and the CT value of our unknown sample is 26. We immediately see that we might expect our unknown sample to contain around 2 log copies per microliter. But to do this accurately, we can rearrange our equation with the slope and y-intercept values to find x. With i-intercept of 26, a b value of 33.9, and a slope of minus 3.3, we find that our unknown sample contains a log quantity of 2.4 copies. 
When we convert this logarithm back to a linear scale, it equates to 250 copies per microliter for our unknown sample. We've now gone through a complete analysis of QRT-PCR data using a standard curve and linear regression to quantify an unknown sample. This approach is most useful when you need absolute quantification, not relative, for example, when working with clinical samples to measure the viral load. We hope you found this video helpful, and as always, best of luck at the bench.